A seizure occurs as a result of abnormal activity in the brain. It is not a specific disease, rather a condition of various symptoms that affect part or all of the nervous system. As a result, a muscle or group of muscles in the body may contract and relax alternately for a short period of time. The person having the seizure usually has no control over the seizure activity. Any body movement that is controlled by the brain may respond abnormally to the electrical activity. Most seizures last from a few seconds to several minutes in time. Some of the more common types of seizures. Tonic-clonic or convulsive, also known as grand mal. Non-convulsive absence, also known as petite mal. Complex partial. Atonic seizures, also called drop attacks. Tonic-clonic or convulsive description. What it looks like. Sudden cry, fall, rigidity, followed by muscle jerks, frothy saliva on lips, shallow breathing or temporary suspended breathing, bluish, possible loss of bladder or bowel control, usually last less than five minutes. Normal breathing then starts again. There may be some confusion and or fatigue following return to consciousness. Often mistaken for Heart attack Stroke What to do Look for medical identification Protect from nearby hazards Loosen ties or shirt collars Place padding under the head Turn on the side to keep airway clear. Keep track of the start and end time of the seizure. Emergency responders need this information. Reassure when consciousness returns. If multiple seizures, or one that lasts longer than 5 minutes call 911 immediately. What not to do? Don't put any heart implement in their mouth. Don't try to hold their tongue. It can't be swallowed. Don't put your fingers in their mouth. The can bite off part or all of your fingers. Don't try to give liquids until the person is fully conscious. Don't use rescue breathing unless respirations are absent. Don't restrain. Non-convulsive absence description. What it looks like. Blank stare lasting only a few seconds. Most common in children. May be accompanied by rapid blinking and or some chewing movements. Child having seizure is unaware of what's going on during seizure, but quickly returns to full awareness once it has stopped. May result in learning difficulties if not recognized and treated. Often mistaken for Daydreaming Lack of attention. Deliberate ignoring of adult instructions. What to do. No first aid necessary. What not to do. Complex partial description. What it looks like. Usually starts with a blank stare, followed by chewing, then random activity, appears unaware of surroundings. May seem dazed and mumble, looks like sleepwalking, unresponsive, actions clumsy, not directed, may pick at clothing, pick up objects, try to take clothes off, run, appear afraid, struggle or flail at restraint. Once pattern established, same set of actions usually occur with each seizure, last a few minutes, but post-seizure confusion can last substantially longer. No memory of what happened during the seizure. Often mistaken for Drunkenness Intoxication on drugs Mental illness Disorderly conduct Shoplifting Indecent exposure What to do Speak calmly and reassuringly to the person and others. Guide gently away from obvious hazards. Stay with the person until they are completely aware of the environment. 
Offer to help get the person home. What not to do. Don't grab hold in less sudden danger, such as a cliff edge or an approaching car. Threatens. Don't restrain. Don't shout. Don't expect verbal instructions to be obeyed. A tonic seizures description. What it looks like. Legs suddenly collapse. After 10 seconds to a minute the person recovers, regains consciousness, and can stand and walk again. Often mistaken for Clumsiness, lack of good walking skills, normal childhood skills. What to do? No first aid is needed, unless person hurts themselves in fall. What not to do? First aid for generalized tonic-clonic seizure performance checklist. Performance step. 1. Remain calm. 2. Begin timing the convulsive phase of the seizure. Call time, so that caregivers can assist you with timing the seizure. 3. Assist the person to the safest environment available, for example, the floor. 4. Protect the individual's head with your hands or place something soft under the head. Example, small pillow, towel or light jacket. 5. Loosen any tight or restrictive clothing. Lay glasses aside. 6. Remove from the area anything that could cause injury. Move the person from the area only if it is clearly dangerous and you cannot remove the hazard. 7. Make sure the mouth and nose are unobstructed by pillow, bedding, clothing, etc. Do not place any object into the person's mouth. If they are drooling or vomiting place person on their side so that fluids can drain out. 8. Do not restrain the person's movements. Let the seizure run its course. 9. Observe the details of the seizure in order to document and report afterwards. 10. When the person stops convulsing call time, determine the length of the convulsive phase of the seizure. 11. Place individual in the rescue position. To do so extend the arm closest to you over the head, the other arm across chest, bend upper knee. Place one hand on the person's hip and one hand on the shoulder and roll the individual onto a side towards you. The arm under the head creates a pillow. 12. As the individual becomes more aware of their surroundings reassure them and confirm that they had a seizure and they are safe with you. Ask open-ended questions to check for the individual's alertness and orientation. 13. Check axillary temperature. Pulse and respiration. Document appropriately. 14. Provide assistance and care as needed. Help clean up, change clothes, help to bed, etc. Continue to monitor. 15. Document the seizure on the seizure report form. Health care chronological and staff log. Write an incident report if necessary. Example. Called 911. Injury. Always place person in the recovery position if vomiting. Airway is restricted and always when convulsive phase has ended. Call 911 if the person's health care plan directs you to do so. Call 911 if the seizure lasts more than 5 minutes and you have no other instructions. If the person seems to pass from one seizure into another without regaining consciousness. Status epilepticus. If it is the person's first known seizure, if they are diabetic, pregnant, in water or sustain injuries that require medical attention. For more information about seizures please visit the Epilepsy Foundation website.
Allergic reaction anaphylactic shock. Allergic reaction anaphylactic shock is always a medical emergency. Anaphylactic shock is a generalized systemic reaction, affects the whole body. It is frequently fatal and usually occurs within minutes after contacting allergen. An allergen is a substance capable of causing an allergic reaction such as food, medication, or bee sting. Anaphylactic shock has a rapid progression of signs and symptoms as indicated below. Respiratory problems. Rapid progressive respiratory distress. Sneezing or coughing. Tightness of chest. Wheezing. Cyanosis. Turning blue or ashen gray. Cardiovascular signs. Heart and circulatory. Pulse changes, becomes weak and thready. Skin becomes pale. Blood pressure falls. Circulatory failure can lead to coma and death. Skin symptoms. Sense of warmth. Flushing of the skin. Generalized itching. Hives. Gastrointestinal signs. Stomach and intestines. Nausea and vomiting. Abdominal pain. Drugs commonly used for treatment are adrenaline, epinephrine, epipen, aminophylline, benadryl, barbiturates, hydrocortisone, atarax, antihistamines, and corticosteroids. To prevent anaphylactic shock always know allergies of the person to whom you are administering medications. Be aware that some individuals are more prone to allergic reactions, such as persons with hay fever, asthma, and food allergies. Always be prepared for allergic and anaphylactic reactions. Remember, allergic reactions can occur at any time, even if the person has never exhibited previous allergies and their record indicates no known allergies. NKA Causes of Anaphylactic Shock Causes of anaphylactic shock include insect bites, bee stings, some vaccines, blood and blood products, allergy tests and injections, medications, antibiotics are the most common, and certain foods or food additives. Many people are allergic to eggs, fish, nuts, brazil, black walnuts, peanut, pecan, hazel, hickory, pistachio, chestnut, almond. English walnut, legumes, peanut, chickpea, pinto beans, soybean, kidney bean, shellfish, shrimp, crab, oyster, and seeds, sesame, cottonseed, flax, poppy, sunflower, caraway. Medical Emergency Remember, allergic reaction anaphylactic shock is a medical emergency. With all medical emergencies, you must call 911 immediately. If the person served has an EpiPen, administer the dose and call 911. The effects of the medication may last only 10 to 20 minutes before the allergy symptoms returns. Also, each time the EpiPen is used, the allergic reaction increases in strength the next time. Infection Control Communicable diseases are infectious diseases caused by germs, bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites. The majority of germs are harmless to human beings, but many do cause disease. Germs are found everywhere in the ground, the air, on the skin, in the mouth and nose, and in the large bowel. They are transmitted, spread, from one person to another or from an animal to a person by either direct or indirect contact. Direct contact means close contact between two persons. Indirect contact means from one person to another person through the air, water, food, surfaces, or insects. Bacteria are very small, one-cell, organisms, living things, which may cause infections. Examples of diseases caused by bacteria are staph infection, strep throat and tonsillitis. Viruses are smaller than bacteria. Examples of diseases caused by viruses are the common cold, 
flu, polio, measles, hepatitis, AIDS, HIV, chicken pox, herpes simplex, cold sores, and shingles. Fungi are a low form of plant life. Diseases caused by fungi are usually mild, by persistent and difficult to cure. Examples are nail infection, yeast infection, and athlete's foot. Parasites are organisms that live at the expense of other organisms. Examples of parasites are head and body lice, scabies and worms. Parasites are responsible for malaria and other health problems. A carrier is a person who harbors a specific pathogen, germ, without observable signs or symptoms of the disease, and has the potential to spread the organism to others. The easiest way to describe how diseases are spread is by using the chain of infection. There are six links to the chain and all must be linked together in order for infections to spread. The six links in the chain. Causative agent. Reservoir. Mode of escape. Mode of transfer. Mode of entry. Susceptible host. Chain of infection. Causative agent. Those things which make you sick that is the germs, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Reservoir. Storage site where the germ hangs out or lives. People, animals, plants, water, food, soil, clothing, floors, countertops, bed linens, etc. Mode of escape ways the germ leaves the reservoir, saliva feces and urine, mucus from the nose and throat, skin lesions, animal feces and urine, pus or discharge from any body opening, sweat and tears, semen, and blood. Mode of transfer ways the germ moves by direct contact, hands, environmental surfaces, polluted water and food, coughing, sneezing, kissing sexual intercourse, bites, scratches, and flies. Mode of entry, waste the germ enters a new host, breathing in droplets, spray, or contaminated air, eating contaminated food, drinking contaminated water, absorption through the skin, body openings, mouth, ears, nose, rectum, and vagina, touching hands to mouth, and breaks in the skin, Susceptible host, a person, for example, who has low resistance, people, animals, plants, birds, and insects. If any one of the six links is broken, the spread of infection will end. For example, if you get plenty of rest, exercise and eat well the likelihood of becoming a susceptible host is decreased. Another example is if you use good hand washing techniques. The chain can be broken at the mode of transfer. Certain circumstances may increase the likelihood of catching an infectious disease. Social conditions like overcrowding or closeness, biological conditions like lowered resistance to infection, and physical conditions of a person such as being overworked, overtired, or under a great deal of stress. The incubation period is the time period between acquiring the infectious organism, germ, and developing the signs and symptoms of the illness or becoming ill. This period may range from several hours to several days to even months or years before symptoms of the disease become apparent. Each disease has its own incubation period. If a person passes the disease to another person or animal, he or she is said to be infectious and the persons exposed to the infection are called contacts. Signs and symptoms associated with communicable diseases. Red or runny eyes. Sneezing or nasal discharge. Cough, particularly if persistent or productive. Sores or crusts on the ears, scalp, face or body, if red swollen, or draining. Any rash or break in the skin. Sore throat, headache. Swelling and tenderness of glands, 
around the face, neck or genital area. Fever, suggested by hot, flushed face, abnormal temperature. Pain and stiffness of neck. Jaundice, yellowing of whites of the eyes and or skin. Diarrhea or persistent abdominal pain. Nausea, vomiting. Sudden or drastic change of behavior, especially in a person who can't speak. Any of these signs and symptoms must be considered an indication of illness and should have medical attention. If any of these symptoms occur while the person is at school, work, or day activity, the home staff or family must be notified immediately. Therefore, make sure each location has the person's home telephone number. Cleanliness is the best weapon to fight infections. Cleanliness measures are hand washing, washing laundry in hot, soapy water and washing, vacuuming and damp dusting all surfaces, hair brushes, toothbrushes and drinking glasses and the like should not be shared. Most disease are spread by hand contact. Even though you may wear gloves for certain procedures at work, the best way to prevent the spread of disease is good hand washing. Proper hand washing technique is something that must be practiced by all. It is your responsibility to provide a safe and clean environment. The steps in thorough hand washing. Wet hands under running water. Apply soap from liquid soap dispenser. Use a rotating friction motion. Rub hands together while counting to 20. To wash fingers and the space between them, interlace fingers and rub up and down. Rinse well under running water, from the wrists to the fingertips. Dry thoroughly with paper towels. Turn off water with a paper towel. Always follow the steps of thorough hand washing after any of the following. Whenever body contact occurs, after handling personal articles, after handling hair, brushing, combing, braiding, trimming, etc. Before handling clean dishes and flatware, before and after food preparation, before and after handling raw and unclean food particularly meat and poultry, before and after eating, before and after smoking. After using a handkerchief or tissue, after coughing or sneezing, after using the toilet and helping others in the bathroom, after taking off disposable and or utility gloves, after taking out the garbage, after playing with a pet, after coming in contact with unclean surfaces, floors, laundry, etc.